The Warehouse Chapter 4 As God the Father walked through his garden, his radiance lighted everything in his path, casting a heavenly glow upon his creation. Yet, this day, God noticed something was amiss. Where are my fairies? God called with laughter in his voice. Hope. Where are you? Serenity. Are you hiding? Where are you? Serenity. Are you hiding? Joy. Surely, you are not sad. Hematite, always the balanced one, are you so unhappy? Knowing where the fairies were hiding, God the Father became concerned, hearing no reply from them. Wisdom. You are the leader. Become apathetic. Curiosity. Have you lost your spark? As God searched, he found that the gemstone's energy adorning the fairies' gowns appeared dim, almost unhappy. What's this? asked God with a smile, trying to encourage the fairies. Sadness is not permitted in my garden. We're sorry, sir, curiosity, sir, curiosity said, emerging from her hiding place. The emeralds in the little fairies' gown no longer flash their dynamic energy. We want to go back to the warehouse, sighed the little fairy. Katie needs us, added compassion. Fire opals in compassion's gown no longer radiated their red, pink, and yellow fire. Yes, yeah. yes, and we miss her, agreed Hope. How sad to see the topaz in Hope's gown cloudy, no longer brilliant with energy. Even passion's red rhodonite did not shine as bright. I dare say she does need you, agreed God the Father. However, there are many others, besides Katie, who may need you as well. Is it sufficiently, then you must go back to the warehouse. Off you go. Immediately, gemstones glowed as the fairies squealed with delight and danced. As the fairies began their flight back to the warehouse, Curiosity turned and said, Thank you, sir. You are most welcome, my dear, replied a radiant god the father. With the father's Katie was ignorant of the fact that her great-great-grandfather, John Wilkins, had suffered perils leaving his home in Missouri and arriving in Florida with a new wife. Neither did she care that this same John Wilkins had helped harvest the ancient timbers of the warehouse from the wilderness territory of Florida. Katie was equally indifferent that her great-great-grandfather, Leo Bates, had milled he was equally indifferent that her great-great-grandfather, Leo Bates, had milled the timbers so many years ago. She knew nothing of the history of how the Bates and Wilkins pioneer families had settled Grayston and at what expense. However, the fairies knew all these things. They remembered the joy, excitement, heartache, and often terror the pioneers had endured to build the warehouse. Moreover, the fairies reveled in the joy as the pioneers celebrated the completion of the warehouse. Katie only knew that the warehouse was the happiest place in the world. It was better than a circus because there were always activities to capture her attention and imagination. It was much better than going to school for obvious reasons. It was even better than attending a birthday. It was even better than attending a birthday party, unless, of course, it was her own birthday party. She was unconcerned that in the 1800s, a riverboat had steamed from Jacksonville to deliver gleaming tin for the roof. However, she was impressed that even the smallest sounds on that tin roof echoed in the enormous, open rafters. Katie loved Katie loved to stand in the middle of the warehouse, surrounded by fairies, and shout, Hello! Katie! Katie! Hello, Daddy G! Daddy G? Daddy G, I love you. Once again, back at the warehouse, the fairies giggled and danced through the rafters, over boxes, and around Katie. Sad, lonely fairy, shouted, Katie, Katie, Katie. Hello, Katie. Curiosity joined in the excitement of hearing her echo, Hello, sir sir, we love you. Hearing their voices bouncing off the tin roof and echoing through the open expanse of the giant timbers excited Katie. Katie had many friends and family who worked in the warehouse. Now the fairies were back and continued to play games with Katie. Daddy G, everybody here is always so happy. Why are they so happy? Most of the time, I'm happy. But sometimes I'm not happy, but then one of my friends listens to me, and then I feel happy again. It was true. Katie had discovered that when she had a difficult day, Katie had discovered that when she had a difficult day, and someone listened, just that little encouragement helped her get through her problem and make a good decision. Listening was the most excellent comfort a friend could offer. The fairies, especially joy and wisdom, were good listeners, but having fairies listen was not the same as having human friends listen and care. Dad Ted came to the warehouse. He was not very happy, was he? But then he got happy, and he kept coming back. What makes people happy, Daddy G, asked Katie, always full of questions. Faith and wisdom hovered about Katie's head, waiting to hear God the Son's answer. Well, Katie, Daddy G tried to explain, 
Here, Ji tried to explain, here at the warehouse, there is a kindred spirit. Huh? What is a kitty spirit, Daddy Ji? asked Katie. At Katie's response, the fairies giggled, for they knew that this kindred spirit existed wherever God the Father and God the Son lived. A kindred spirit comes when people believe the same thing. Here at the went for people to feel like they belong. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, Daddy G. I love belonging here at the warehouse and belonging to you, Katie replied with giggles. I am glad you like being here. I like having you here, too, said Daddy G in a soft, understanding voice. We like being here with you, too, crooned Serenity, looking at God the Son with loving eyes. God the Son returned Serenity's love with a wink. With so many employees, volunteers and visitors working, talking, laughing, singing, and sometimes whistling, the warehouse was a busy place. Despite all this activity, it was not noisy. Instead, it was an oasis of joy and peace. Everyone worked well together and seemed to enjoy their tasks. Katie was quiet a moment as she evaluated this. Was everyone happy because they had a job? Or did everyone have a job because they were happy? Either way, Katie knew she, too, wanted a job. Daddy G, I want a job at the warehouse, Daddy G, I want a job at the warehouse, begged Katie. And I want a gift of my very own. What kind of job were you thinking about, Katie? I don't know. After thinking a moment and remembering the tantalizing secrets hidden from her view, she squealed, I know. I can make sure all the boxes are in the right places, then open them to make- Hum, said Daddy G, feigning thought. I don't need a box checker, Katie. Well, then, can I count the boxes? asked Katie. I'm a good counter, and I will be very careful, I promise. Oh, please, Daddy G, let me count the boxes. I'm not sure you are ready for a job like that yet, Katie, Daddy G. Oh, please, Daddy G, let me count the boxes. I'm not sure you are ready for a job like that yet, Katie, Daddy G said in a sympathetic voice. I just like having you here and watching you play. I will know when you are ready for a job. When will I be ready, begged Katie. I want to feel the kitty spirit and have a job and knew her longing. Don't fret about it, my Katie, comforted Daddy G be happy and enjoy the friendly, safe feeling. Indeed, the warehouse was a safe place. Katie noticed that people were not afraid when they were there. They all seemed to enjoy and even appreciate the safety of the warehouse. Even though blocks and blocks of a heavy traffic highway front fronted the warehouse, Katie felt safe. It was an unusual feeling. Not that feeling safe was unusual, but in the warehouse, that feeling was curious and mystical, almost reverent. I do feel safe, Daddy G, Katie said. The warehouse is a perfect place. From the busy highway, the warehouse looked like any other old wooden roof needed cleaning, and the wood needed a new coat of paint. However, this building was different. To Katie, it was mystical, even magical. It was unexplainable. Just as quickly as her questions flowed, Katie's attention shifted. Daddy G? Yes, ma'am? Do you think one of these boards came from one tree? Do you think one of these boards came from one tree? Katie asked, pointing to one of the longest floor planks. Compassion, curiosity, and joy followed to where Katie's finger pointed as the chatty little girl spoke. The fairies hovered over the planks of wood, remembering the history held within the fibers of the timber. I imagine it could. The tree would have to be- Yes, ma'am. It would be very tall and incredibly old, agreed Daddy G. Thick wooden timbers, expansive joists, and sturdy buttresses that formed the skeleton of the warehouse still revealed skillful cuts from pioneer axes. Daddy G, continued Katie. Yes, Katie, replied a patient, Daddy G, how old is the top of- Katie, replied a patient, Daddy G, how old is the top of the warehouse? It looks old and rusty. Well, since the building of the warehouse was completed in 1899, the tin on the roof would be over 70 years old. Wow, breathed Katie. As if enhancing the aura of their deep secrets, the wood released ancient fragrances. A st smoky, white oak that loving hands had carved into a cradle one year and a tiny coffin the next, southern cypress used to fashion a sturdy ladder for little ones to scamper up to bed or the front door of a cozy cabin. The fairies recalled the joyful fragrances of remembered celebrations with European balsam, Norwegian spruce, or Douglas fir hiding the scents of Christmas's past. Of Christmas's past. It was as if the scents held happy squeals of excited children, waking up on Christmas morning to find a decorated tree reflecting the flickering light of a cozy fireplace. Katie wondered if lots of toys covered the floor under the tree, or was there just one unique, handmade toy displayed for little eyes and hands to find, to caress, and to treasure.
treasure. Katie imagined that she heard the tinkle of crystal as little hands lifted the cover from a forbidden candy bowl. She felt her taste buds explode as she remembered the taste of sweet delights of strawberry-flavored discs filled with delicious jellies, or thick yellow ribbons of lemon-flavored hard candy, or classic peppermint candy canes. Katie heard stories of children in a mint candy canes. Katie heard stories of children in a one-room schoolhouse, sitting on benches hewn from ancient pine, trying not to squirm lest splinters pierced their breeches or pantaloons. The fairies remembered watching children write on black slates with chunky pieces of chalk, and they laughed when Katie had tried tasting chalk and found out quickly that it was not one of her favorite things. He could see in her imagination the grandmother waiting to snatch up her school-weary grandchildren into her arthritic arms and smother them in thousands of hugs and kisses. Katie giggled to herself when she imagined the children, once released from arms of love, melted to the floor in a puddle of giggles. The children knew that chocolate chip cookies and milk always waited for them on the old work table. Imagining hidden stories, Katie also played inside the cavernous space of the warehouse, climbing ladders and walking beams when she thought no one was watching. She ran chasing fairies, dodging in and out between the boxes that filled every nook and cranny of the building. Chase me! Chase me, squealed Joy. Can't catch me, taunted curiosity. Can't catch me, taunted curiosity. Just as Katie gave chase, Grace and Courage jumped out from behind another stack of boxes. Gotcha, shouted Grace, shaking with giggles. Katie stopped in her tracks, and her body tensed. Squealing, she turned and ran in the other direction with the fairies in hot pursuit. That game continued until Katie or the fairies fell in a heap from exhaustion or became bored with the game. Then Katie turned her attention to climbing to the highest rafter. Look at me, Daddy G, Katie squealed as she climbed a ladder high up to the loft. What are you doing up there, Katie? Daddy G inquired with amusement. I heard fly up here, and I wanted to see where he sleeps. Be careful, my dear. You're not a little bird, and if you fall, you won't fly, warned Daddy G, you would catch me, Daddy G, Katie replied in her childlike faith. Just as quickly, Katie's attention turned to a new interest. Daddy G, squealed Katie. There are Katie. There are bats hanging upside down. I had a baby bat once, but Nana wouldn't let me keep him. He had to go back to his house in the swing set. Will you catch me a bat, Daddy G, begged Katie. No, Katie, we can't disturb the bats. They have a job to do at night, so we better let them sleep, answered Daddy G. Come down, please. Obediently, Katie climbed down a ladder onto a platform below, then squealed and giggled as she jumped into Daddy G's waiting arms. Now, what can I do? Katie whined. Here, Katie, said Daddy G handing her a broom. Would you like to sweep around the boxes? Um. Would you like to sweep around the boxes? Oh, yes. You're giving me a job, asked Katie with delight. The fairies were also delighted for Katie. They fluttered around her head, whispering in her ear stories about the garden, all the while dusting their little friend with their gemstone energies. Katie giggled and sang as she worked, little feet. Katie giggled and sang as she worked, little feet, be careful where you take me to. Anything for Jesus, only let me do. Daddy G beamed as he listened to the sweet words of the song. As Katie swept, she was careful not to disturb the stacks of boxes and cartons, for intuitively, she knew that these were not just ordinary, but extraordinary boxes containing attaining extraordinary treasures. Though some were simple cardboard, many others boasted lavish gold gilding or metallic paper reflecting colors of the rainbow. No matter the decorations, they all held unique gifts of all sizes and values. Even though Katie did not know what each box contained, the boxes fascinated her, firing her desire for a special gift of her or for a special gift of her own. As she swept, the fairies hovered and fluttered about Katie as the chatty little girl asked more questions. What's inside the shiny boxes? I like the yellow one. Are those blue ones for a boy? Oh, this box wrapped in brown paper is not pretty at all. I wouldn't want that box. Ah. Uh. Look at this box. It's all covered with dust. How long has it been here? Did someone forget it was here? 